Technically, his name is Gilbert with two L's. <laughs> yeah, right now it doesn't even have the googly eyes on it, so. That's why it's not working. I think that's probably it. I'm Stephen Howe. I'm a fourth year PhD student um, in the biomimicry program, and I study fish biomechanics. So um, I'm interested in how they move um, and how their body movements uh, relate to their um, total body. So this is our um, fish robot. It's a robotic platform that we use to answer questions about fish locomotion that we can't with live fish because robots do what you want, whereas the animal doesn't always do what you ask it to. And so um, the robot actually provides us an interesting set of um, circumstances, we can change the shape of the robot independent of the motions that the body makes. So if I'm studying eels and tuna, um, I can't tell the eel, would you mind swimming like a tuna for me? And vice versa. Whereas with a robot, we can make this shaped like a tuna and say, robot, please swim like an eel. So there's a skeleton inside that you can then have algorithms that Yeah. Can... The robot is pretty simple. It's five servo motors connected through an Arduino. And then we use the Arduino program to um, run the robot and um, the program that we've written allows us to program uh, straight swimming but also interject turns whenever we want um, and this is based on some of my earlier research with fish and um, understanding how they control their pulses. So the tether is slightly taking it for a wall, right? So yeah, um, there's no sensors or anything in here um, deciding when it should turn. It's just a pre-programmed algorithm. And um, I use the tether kind of as a leash to reset the system. Looks like we have a motor not behaving. Everything on this robot, save the um, motors and the wires, is 3D printed. So that flexible tail you see, we printed in our machine in the back. And these body shells, we copied the morphology of an actual fish. So this is based on a giant danio, which um, is the larger cousin of the zebra fish that you see in the pet shop all the time. We can make this shape like anything. Our um, future research is going to involve looking at um, how increasing body depth uh, changes the maneuverability. So think about uh, plate-shaped fish like a discus or um, like a place uh, or a skate or? Well, places and skates are interesting because um, they've turned their heads to the side and so they look like they're um, top to bottom, um, but they do swim like a laterally compressed fish. But um, think more like uh, tangs, like Dory. Hi, I'm Dory. Where? Which way? I'm trying to see which motor this is and I'll just unplug it. Sounds like you're complaining. Yeah. No, that didn't drop the amperage. Okay. There's a few different applications, mainly opportunities for underwater reconnaissance. It can be applied to, I mean, the Navy would be interested in things like this, but so would um, uh, oil rig um, inspections as well as dams or bridges. Um, most often, uh, the robots they're using right now are shaped like refrigerators and have about six squirt guns pointing off of uh, several different directions and so you can imagine so jet one way or the yeah other. you've got a very un hydrodynamic shape that's very unstable uh, matched with a very complicated control scheme and so you lose these things all the time and they're like five million dollars a piece so if you have a control scheme that's more robust but is still just as maneuverable um, you can potentially not lose things nearly as often, <laughs> so. We hope. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the other thing is like just underwater exploration in general. Like uh, we can scuba dive and free divers can dive down to like 500 feet, but they can only be down there for three to 40 minutes depending on uh, the circumstances. And so because of that, we know almost nothing about what's happening underwater. Ultimately, it would be good if we can spend a whole lot more time underwater and uh, drones like this are going to be important for being able to expand our capabilities in that realm. So, Just a single wave. Uh, we're working on more complex implementations. And finally, it can even perform something called concertina locomotion. And so once it gets to that point, it'll finish a cycle. So this is what they do inside of a tunnel. If it hit the tunnel wall, it would be detecting that.